said I was going to teach about this today. So. <laughs> John 20. John chapter 2. Where about there? Okay. John 20, 20, John 20, John 20, John 20, verse 11, John 20, 11, John 20, verse 11. Can, can, can you guys give the musicians water and snacks, please? John 20, verse 11, let's go to 16. But Mary stood outside by the tomb, weeping, and as she wept, she stood down and looked into the tomb. And she saw what? And she saw what? Two angels. In white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had laid. Fix the mic, please. Then they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know when they had laid him. Now, when she had said this, she turned around and saw who? Jesus. Standing there, and did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She, she, supposed, she, she supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if, I, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him, Rabbani, which means to, to say, teacher. Father, bless this word. And speak, do not let me speak. In Jesus' name. Give your neighbor a high five. Say, you are blessed. Be seated. Be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know the story. Jesus. have been arrested. They took him, crucified him. Is it okay I teach a little? And I'm going to pray for you. They crucified him. An innocent man. Your own innocent. Just because of the hatred. Just because they could not have their own ways. They could not do. What they wanted to do. They could not steal from the people. They could not rob the people. They took him. And they killed him. Because he stopped them. When Jesus was on the cross, He was fulfilling prophecies or the assignment that men could never done. And he did it for them. Die for humanity. While he was on the cross, he breathed his last and say, Father, in your hands, I committed my spirit. Can I keep going? 
When he committed his spirit, the Bible said he died. According to the Jewish laws, when someone is on the cross and they die, just in case, if the person is not really dead, they have to break their bones. So while they're on the cross, they will take a hammer and hit their knees to break their knees just in case. So they can never be right. So when Jesus breathed his last, they, they came to do it. But the way the weather was, God was moving. The Father was angry. They couldn't do it because there was a prophetic word that none of his bones would be broken. So instead of breaking his bones, they took a spear and pierced his side. The Bible says, water, blood, came out. Now, scientifically, the reason water and blood came out, he was hung on a cross. There was no support. So the water in his lungs no. sit in one place. Because he couldn't even breathe. Because the way the cross was designed, his hands, his feet. So if he takes support on his feet, he can take, he can stay long. So while he's taking support, he can't breathe. So now after a while, if he takes support from the hands, he still can't breathe. So it's like he's going back and forth. Feet and feet hand. Water sits in his lungs. So when they pierce him, water gushed out. Blood gushed out. Which in the spirit represent word and spirit. The water is um, the blood. Um, I mean, the word is the blood. The water is the spirit. Are you guys understand what I'm saying? This side, you left the building uh, I feel the attention here. Are you here? Can I keep going? Are you sure? Are you sure? So, word and spirit. John 6, verse 63. But the words that speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. The life is in the word. Amen. Amen. Now, after he died, his body was just laid there. A certain man who feared God, who knew who Jesus was, he went to Pilate. He said, you kill him. Let me have his body. So we can give him a proper burial. So Pilate said, okay. They give the body of Jesus. They took Jesus. They do the ritual, the, what they're supposed to do to bury a man. They mummified him. And then put incense, smelling good things to anoint his body. And then they took him to a special tomb. It was a rich man. So they took him to the tomb and put him in the tomb and then they rolled the stone. And I keep going. When they rolled the stone, the disciples went to in the room side crying. They don't know what to do. They don't know where else to go because Jesus is not there anymore. So the Bible said early morning it was Sunday morning. Mary decided. Bless God for the women. Because Peter, 
Peter would have never gone. He would have never gone visit. Peter would say he's dead. Leave him dead. But Mary said, I want to visit the tomb of the Lord. Let me go put flowers. So Mary went to the tomb. When Mary Marie got to the tomb, from far, de loin, she realized the stone Washla, that was in front of the tomb, qui était ton blanc, it rolled away. It rolled away. There's a simple explanation for that. Non, point force. The stone roll because two angels came. They rolled the stone. When Mary got there, she went and saw the tomb empty. She entered the tomb to look for the body of Jesus. Now, the worry of Mary was not that Jesus resurrected. The worry of Mary was they stole his body. Now, you got to understand why Mary was afraid. This, this was a famous man. You think that if they had found the body of Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson, what do you think they would have done with the body of Michael Jackson? The fans, the people who are addicted. If they found the body, what do you think they would have done with it? They would have turned it into an idol. To worship an idol. So Mary, where it was, that they stole the body of Jesus. So she came out. When she came out, she saw two men. And then she tried to find out where is the body of the Lord. And then while she was looking, she saw men. And then when she saw the man, she said, if you took his body, I need the body back. You need to put it back. We need the body. The man is dead. Leave him alone. And then while she was talking, he said, Mary. Marie. Now one thing about Jesus. When he speaks to you. You know that voice. Mary ran back. Tell the disciples. Then Marie Peter ran. And, and when Peter ran. ran look found the tomb empty. And when he found the tomb empty. He ran back. When he ran back. And he told all of them. They did not believe. When they did not believe. Jesus appeared. Jesus paraît. And then show himself to them. Paraît, et à même. And says, I'm not dead. Et lui dit, pas mourir. I am alive. Vivant. Show them. Montrez they touch him. Touchez lui. I'm alive. Vivant. I know you know the story. Moi, que nous là. But now the question is, who was the two angels? Qui qui était des angels? It was not a coincidence that two angels showed up in front of the tomb. It was not a coincidence. They have been there the whole time. But they just that they never had the assignment. They never had the access to reveal themselves the way they revealed themselves. Who was those two angels that showed up? And the Bible even said in the book of Acts chapter 1 that when Jesus was lifted or ruptured into heaven, two angels appeared again. Right when he disappeared, they said, this Jesus you see, the same way he goes up is the same way he will come back. Two angels again. Are you guys here? Can I continue? Are you sure I can continue? The Bible said, in the beginning, God 
Create heavens and earth. Then God created everything else. Then God created the garden. Then after God created the garden, then God put men in the garden. Then after God put men in the garden, God gave men the command of how to live in the garden, what to eat and what not to eat. Now, I don't have time to break it down to you. It was not real food. The fruits. When, when the Bible says there was many fruits in the garden, it was not real fruits. I don't have, I don't have time to break it. Are you guys there? So it was not real fruits. So don't think that there is a tree that has a fruit in it that you cannot eat. Yes, it will kill you or something. No, listen, it was not real, fru real fruits. The Bible speaking parables. Every tree represent a type of character, personality, and attitudes. So God is saying to them, of all these personalities, you can eat this, you can eat that, you can eat that. But there is one type of personalities that give the knowledge of good and evil. Don't eat from it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Galif Galatians chapter 5 talk about fruits. Fruits of what? Fruits of the Spirit. Do you see? It's not real fruits. It's characters and personalities that we're supposed to receive. When Jesus played, pray for the blind man, he says, what do you see? He said, what? I see men like trees. So in another word, the trees in the garden, they represent somebody. The, the tree of knowledge of good and evil represent who? Lucifer, never mind. <laughs> Get my book. You'll see it. So, when God commanded men not to eat, the serpent deceived. Do you see? The serpent. This is who? Not to eat from. And he's the one that's feeding them. They ate. He says, don't eat. They ate. So after they ate, what happened? God kicked them out. Watch me here. God did what? He kicked them out. Kicked them out where? From the Garden of Eden. Now after God kicked them out, the Bible said he did something else. He called his cherubim and he placed them to guard the, God, the Garden of Eden. He called his cherubim. He placed the cherubim to guard the garden of Eden so that men could not enter into the garden with a sinful nature. Because there was something that's in the garden that was worth protecting. It was another tree. And that tree was called the tree of life. Are you following me here? It was called what? The tree of life. Now, first of all, before I move any further, what is a cherubim? A cherubim is not an angel. It's a cherubim. Put me up because something out there is bugging me. A cherubim is not an angel. It's a cherubim. It's a being that has four faces. I have two wings to fly, two wings to cover his face, two wings to cover his feet. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The four faces are faces of a lion, faces of an ox, faces of a man, and faces of an eagle. Now, each of these faces, they represent something about the word of God. Each of these faces, who is the word of God? John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Who is that word? John says, he is the savior of the world. Who is the savior of the world? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Who is the son of God? To 
condemned to them has been given a son and his name shall be called Emmanuel and you shall call his name Jesus. So now who is the word of God? Jesus is the word of God. So in another word, the cherubim, they each had a face that represent something about Jesus. Each one of them had a face that talked about Jesus. In the Old Testament, it was concealed. In the New Testament, it was revealed. Each of these faces speak of who Jesus is. In the book of Matthew, in the book of Luke, in the book of Mark, and in the book of John. Nobody is there. You, you're not there. No, are, you, are you sure you're there? I believe Matthew, he's a man. Mark, he's an ox. John, he's an eagle. And then Luke, he's what? What's the other one? Huh? You guys are confusing me. <laughs> Matthew, he's a man. John, he's an eagle. Mark, Mark, he's the ox. What's the third one? The fourth one. The lion is Luke. So if you read the book of Matthew, they speak of the genealogy of Jesus, where he came from the lineage of man. If I'm lying, say I'm lying. I'm telling the truth, say I'm telling the truth. So, I mean, John, he is the lion, and Luke, he's the eagle. Because the book of John spoke of his majesty. The book of Mark spoke of the healing ministry. The book of Luke spoke of what he saw, what he spoke, the parables. Mm. I know I'm teaching good. Did you only come here to get prayer and then, then shake your neighbor and say, you better say Amen. Or is this too deep for Mais you? Que ça a trop pour pour so the cherubim, cherubim represent Christ, Christ in different characters, in different personalities. So there's one prophet that saw these cherubim besides Adam. So when, Adam, when Adam was kicked out of the garden, cherubim was protecting the garden. Watch this, come on, please pay attention. There's no way they could come back in the garden. It's not because God is not allowing them, but because they have to understand now the beings that protect the, the garden of Eden, they represent Christ. So that's mean now they need the word of God to find access back in the garden. You still miss in the point. The Bible says when they was in the garden, the voice of God comes every day to teach them. But when they got kicked out of the garden, the voice of God did not come. So if the voice of God did not come, they need the word of God now. That's when they need divine instruction. Maybe this, maybe this is too deep for you guys. Maybe this is too deep. My goodness. So it's, it's, it's like I'm speaking. Hey, how you do? The more I speak, the more you can learn. But if I stop speaking, you got to look for what I am writing. And one of the reasons God stopped talking because the word snatched out of the mouth of God. Maybe this is too deep for you guys. Because you guys refuse to say amen. God become mute. He become mute. He can talk. The voice of God stop talking. Because he become mute. I can prove. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word become what? Flesh. So if the Word become flesh, how can God talk? So 
So the word was snatched out of the mouth of God. God couldn't talk no more. And the word become a logos. Meaning it become a written word. It become a what? A written word. So now that written word, this is what we call Jesus. Now watch this here. It is not everything in the Bible. It's not everything in the Bible that point out to Jesus unless unless there's a revelation. What I'm saying is you could read the Bible and you don't see Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Bible said he said to them they search the scriptures because they're looking for who? They're looking for him. But he said, I'm right here. You can't even tell that I'm here. So that's when that you could read it. You don't see him. Unless he opened your eyes. Who do people say is that I am? Some say you are John the Baptist. Some say you are Elijah. One of the prophets. But who do you say is that I am? You are the son of God. Peter. Flesh and blood. Flesh and blood. That's when I can read it. I don't see it. Because because flesh and blood, theology, divinity, it doesn't matter what school, what degree you have, flesh and blood cannot reveal this to you. But it was my father in heaven. That's when the Holy Ghost came down before time and revealed to Peter that he is Jesus. Then when Peter realized that the Holy Spirit opened his eyes, then Jesus prophesied. Peter, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Acts chapter 3, the Spirit of God came upon Peter. He said, man, we are not drunk. We are full of the Holy I wish I had a church. I only got people who come and get prayer tonight. <laughs> Put my mic off. What I'm teaching right now is serious. You will not find it on Google. Amen. So there's no way they could access back because the cherubims they protect the garden because the tree of life not only the tree of life paradise is the garden a piece a, 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 a piece of heaven was connected to the garden. And it was removed. So now watch it this year. When men lost the garden. For, for 1,000 one years. They become wicked. And that is one of the reasons the cherubims. The cherubims, they had to protect the garden. Because they become weak, men become wicked. Now the voice of God not speaking. The word of God is not yet written. There was no law. There was no rules. There was no discipline. Can you imagine that you went to a town. There's no law in the town. There's no rules in the town. What do you think people are going to do in that town? What do you think? We have police officers today. Even when we have police officers and there are laws, people still can keep the law and they try to find ways to lie in the law. The reason that the, the reason there's so much lawsuits today People suing people because people looking around the law to find a gap in the law to create something else so they can find ways to make money. In another way, they bent the truth. 
So even there's a law, they Même picked the law to create confusion. So men could not go back for 1,000 years. Abomination. Abomination. 1,000 years. Until God wiped everything away. Then after God wiped everything, Noah survived. Then from Noah survived, Abraham came. When Abraham came, Abraham began to offer sacrifices to God. Because Abraham wanted to Follow what God says. But even then, Abraham could not do it the way he's supposed to do it. So God told Abraham, I'm going to build a nation through you. Then Abraham, then Isaac, then Jacob, then Jacob, then Joseph, then Joseph, then, Joseph, then the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 tribes, give birth to the nation, then the birth of the nation in the land of Egypt. Are you following me? Then while they was in the land of Egypt, for 400 years, they was in bondage in Egypt because they multiplied so much, Pharaoh kept them in captivity. You ask, how did Pharaoh do it? At those times, the black nation, black people, somebody say, I'm black. Even the white people here say, I'm black. So black people, the black people, there was the most powerful nation. Egypt was the powerful nation at that time. Economically, politically, uh, 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 um, inventions and different things they created. Egypt was the most powerful nation at that time. So now Israel began to multiply in the land of Egypt. And then as there was multiplying, Egypt find out if they, if they let these people to find out who they are, they will conquer them. So now what they did, they put Israel in bondage. Are you hearing me? So while Israel in bondage, comes Moses. When Moses came, Moses went and spoke to God. God revealed himself to Moses. When God revealed himself, watch me here, watch me, please follow me. Then while Moses spoke to God, God sent Moses to bring them out. When Moses brought them out, and um, God says, go to the wilderness, come to serve me, come to offer sacrifice. When they got to the wilderness, they want to offer sacrifice. Moses went up in the mountain. When he went up in the mountain, then God gave Moses a divine instruction Call the tabernacle. That's why in Haiti we have a lot of tabernacle. Can I keep going? Are you following me? Now, the tabernacle, God says, as long as a tabernacle, I will be with you. So in the tabernacle, there was the outer court. Maybe this teaching is too deep. There was the outer court. The outer court, this is where they do the sacrifice. There was the inner court, which is called the sanctuary. Right now, this is the sanctuary. I will preach this message again. Maybe in Africa. I, I will preach this message again. Because I'm getting too excited. And you, you, you're not excited to enough. The tabernacle of Moses, it was built out of court. The out of court, this is where they kill the animals. This is where they, they sacrifice the animals. This is where the bloods of sacrifice, all this thing happen. Now, there's the outer court, then there's the inner court. The inner court, or which is called the holy place. Now, the holy place, this is what we call the sanctuary. Now, right now, where we are right now, we are in the sanctuary. So, in the in other words, I'm just going to go just a little bit about it. I'm not going to do much about it. But before you came to church, it's not while you are in the church, you're supposed to be repenting of your sins. You're supposed to do that in the outer court. That's mean before you leave your house, you repent of your sins.
I'm not going to go anymore because you guys are not exciting at all. Pas content. <sighs> you guys are making me sleepy. Nous faisons bien dormir. Decide. I don't know what's wrong with you at all. How did you end up here? Usually you... Know. <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. So this is considered to be called the sanctuary or the holies of holies. I mean, all the holy place. Now, in the sanctuary, there is a, in the holy place, in the tabernacle of Moses, there was what you call the menorah, the menorah, or the candlesticks, the menorah. Then you have what you call the showbread in the table. Then from the showbread in the table, then you have the altars of incense. I will not break it down to you. Because you know you won't say amen, you don't say hallelujah. If God is going to bless you, amen. But I'm telling you serious stuff right now. This is I'm giving you the blessing. Each one of these, the menorah, the table, the showbread, the altar of incense, each one of them, without it. You cannot go to the next step. Because after the holy place, you have the holy of holies. There's the holy of holies. So that's mean you can you can go to the holies of holies if you have not been to the outer court, to the holy place, then the, you cannot enter the holies of holies. And even the sanctuary in those times is only a priest that entered the sanctuary. You, no, nobody can enter the sanctuary. And the, 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 the Bible says something so crazy. The holy place, the candles, inside of the holy place, it was built of gold. The walls was made of gold. So when you light up the candles, it looked like electricity. Wow. You see, if you guys was really alive today, I will teach you stuff you don't know. But you're not alive today, you know. You see, I put my teaching clothes on. That's the color blue. That's mean I'm prophetic today, but you you know. <laughs> what I'm teaching right now, some people it take them 50 years to get it. But I, by the grace of God, I can talk about it. So now watch this. So the, the place was made of gold. So when the, the, the candles light up, it stays on. The, the Bible said the candles was not allowed to go out. It has to it has to be lit up the whole night. Now if I said I, I'm not gonna break it down, but the the menorah it was made of seven candles. There's the, the middle one, yes, and then one, et puis on two, et puis and then three, trois. and then on the other side, on one, un, two, deux, three. Trois. Now, guess what? Gardez. When God gave Moses the instruction to make the menorah, he menorah, did not allow them to connect pieces. They took one piece of gold to make the whole thing. That's been no attachment. Because it means something. Ah. Okay, let me explain it better. I need seven people. Seven people. Where's Shamika? Shamika, put you good, good. Because when I do this thing, they cost me. Good. So, you're the midsection. So, the instruction God give Moses. Usually when, when some when those people who do what do you call it? Those people who do craftsmen's. The craftsmen's. Mm -hmm. Um I think they call them um in the old days, um, what do you call it? People who make the swords. Swordsmiths. 
Yeah. So the, it's like it's like it's like a swordsmith, but craftsmen. They they bent iron and to create things. You, you, you get it. You get it now. You are getting it now. So usually when they're making stuff, they, they will take the things piece by piece, and they will attach them. Do you see what I'm saying? But when God gave Moses the instruction, he did not want, them, want Moses to attach the piece to the centerpiece. So there was no attachment. So he said, take a gold, a piece of gold, and then branch everything out. Don't attach anything to it. That's when if it breaks, start over. So that's mean there's one candle, one candle, one candle, then the center candle, then one candle, one candle, one candle, one candle, one candle, one candle, one candle. every one of them is one candle, but seven candles. It's not only that. What did I talk about recently? The seven spirits. You guys can sit down. I won't break it down, but because you guys, you guys are not happy today. Je dis à nous pas content. You, you want me to talk about God going to bless you? Hey. God going to kill your enemy? Hey. No, not tonight. Not tonight. When I do that teaching, you guys better, y'all better listen. That, that teaching right there, it changed my life. Y'all taking notes, huh? Oh. Mm, mm. So okay, now now let me finish. Now the 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 A big box. Okay, that's the menorah. There you go, there you go. Look on the screen. That's, that's, that's the menorah right there. Now, if they was constructing it, they would have attached the piece. And I think they, they, they what do you call it? They, they took the thing and, and, and connected no. to it, whatever. But um, all of that was made from one piece of gold. All of it. No. Now, my God, there's no time. There's no time. <laughs> All of the side, one, two, three. One, two, three. This one is fake. Because the fires on the side, all of them point to the center. Wow. So when they light the candle, the fire point to the center. All the sides. Because the center point, it represents Jesus. Never mind. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm talking too much here. Hey, my God. You know, oh, why he's giving people degrees? Oh, now you've you seen why I give degrees. degrees. <laughs> Verse 3. If you can learn that, go learn it too. All right. Are you listening to me? Uh, oh, you want to go home? No. Ou déjà béni, ou m'est allé. Babralé. Ou m'est allé. Babralé. That's the only Creole I know. All right. Oh, I didn't know you was Haitian. That's the only Creole I know. <laughs> Amen. Let's go. Now, in the holies of holies. Can you put the ark for me? Find the ark. Put it. There was a box. Take it on what? The box was made of gold. What la te fait en or? Of gold. Oh, no. That box. What's that? God told Moses. Bon Dieu dit Moïse, it represents his glory. glory. That the box what la? had a lid. Il était the lid couverture of the box. What la? It represents represent what you call the mercy seat. That's mean this is where ça veut dire là God sit bon Dieu, and his mercy. Et puis, puis, is coming to men. Are you guys hearing what I'm saying? So now, that box, it was the same box, or the ark, that 
God told them, there you go, Je on the screen, dire, that wherever this is, côté, ça y est, his presence will be there. Inside of the box contain the the Ten Commandments. Yeah, commandment, Moses put the Ten Commandments and commandment, there was a little bit of manna, the manna they ate from the wilderness, the desert. It was inside of the box. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So now, wherever this was, God's presence was there. The top of the box, in the middle section, this is the mercy seat. This is where God sits. But if you realize, there's two angels. So you think I'm doing all this talking for no reason? Now, there's a better picture. You see the center point? It, it, it light up. That's where God sits. That's the mercy seat. But if you realize, two angels, what they do is, they are covering the presence of God présence, mon Dieu. on the mercy seat. Do not listen. So now, those two angels, they were cherubims. Cherubim to cover pour the presence of God. Présence, bon You're still missing my point. point when Adam and Eve, Adam et Eve. Uh, um, African says Adam, when Adam, Adam and Eve, Eve got kicked out of the garden, the Bible said they put cherubim. cherubim. God put cherubim right to, to protect what? So now he built an ark and he put his presence on there. When he put his presence, what did he do again? He put cherubim to come. He's still covering the presence. That means he's still protecting the presence. Those of you that listen in, may more fire come to you. May more fire enters you. I receive it. So, those are two cherubim. So, in another word, those two cherubim are there. Without the word of God, you cannot encounter the presence. The moment you see the cherubim, you cannot access God's presence without the word. Because the cherubim, they will not let you. They cannot access the garden because of the cherubim. Why? Without the word of God, you cannot enter the garden. Now realize the Ten Commitments are inside of the Ark of the Covenant. covenant. So in another word, when you know the word, that's when at that time, it was the law. When you follow the law, then you can access the presence of God. He says, as long you obey my commandments, you will be my people, I will be your God. That's what he said to them. That's not the Ark. That's the showbread. Put the Ark, put the Ark. Amen. There you go. There you go. So now, two cherubims on top. Still covering them. Now, the holies of holies, not everybody was privileged to enter that place. Moses had a great grace to enter the, the holies of holies. But a priest 
was given access once a year. And that's how we found out Zacharias entered the holies of holies. Gabriel spoke to Zacharias and told Zacharias John the Baptist is coming. He couldn't believe. He went mute. Because Gabriel said I've been in his presence. I live there. And you can't believe me. Them cherubins don't play. Now, the holies of holies, it was covered up by a veil. Am I telling the truth? Before I even before I even go even further, Avant même aller plus loin, do you know est-ce qu'on est? it was the same you are not ready for this <laughs> you are ready it was the same cherubim c'était même cherubim them two cherubim deux cherubim ça yo that destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah Sodom and Gomorrah Do you know why they destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? It's not just because of the abomination. There was no law. There was no rules. So God cannot allow something with, without his law to continue to go on. There was three, three being shows up. One of them stayed with Abraham. Two of them went to Sodom and Gomorrah. You're missing it. The one that stays with Abraham, it was not an angel. It was Jesus himself. That's why Abraham said, my Lord, sit with me. Oh my God, you guys are not there. You guys, you guys really not there. You guys really not there. You, you show you there. No, so no, no. So it, it, the the two went, the two left. They went to Sodom and Gomorrah. One of them stayed with Abraham. Then Abraham began to plead. If you find, if you find, if you find, if you find, if you find. And Lot was saved. So. It was those two cherubims that destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. Now, with the other one, the holies of holies, you see, there is a veil. You cannot access the holies of holies without going beyond the veil. It was the same veil Moses had to put over his face when he come down the mountain because the glory of God was shining through the face of Moses. They could not look at his face. So he had to cover his face. It represents that men was not yet saved to encounter the glory of God. So you have to go behind the veil. I'm about to say it. I'm about to finish my message. Those of you who came for prayer. You didn't come for the word. You came for prayer. I'm about to conclude my message. So the veil. Voila. While Jesus, while Jesus was on the cross, the Bible said darkness covered the whole earth. When darkness covered the whole earth, 
Jesus said, Eloi, Eloi, why hast thou forsaken me? And then while he was saying, Eloi, he said, let me complete my assignment. So the Bible said, after he said that, something happens. The veil of the holies of holies split in two. So now you ask me, prophet, why did the veil split in two? Well, I am a doctor in theology, I can tell you. The reason the veil split in two, because the cherubim says, my job is not in a box anymore. It's time for me to come out. They're not, they say we're not supposed to be in the holies of holies. Back there, back there. You see what the ark is, the ark of the covenant. They, 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 the two of them was on there, right? So when the veil split in two, they came out. So you say, prophet, when they came out, where did they go? <laughs> At that moment, after Jesus said, Hello, hello, the field split it too. He said, I need water. They give him vinegar. And then he drank the vinegar. Then he said, It is finished. It is finished. And then he committed the spirit. When he committed the spirit, the Bible said he descended to the lower regions. He went to Sheol. Sheol was a paradise because on the cross, he told the man that was on his right, tomorrow uh, you will be with me in paradise. So he went to Sheol and when he got to Sheol, he saw Abraham. How do I know it was Abraham? Because because the Bible said there was a parable of Lazarus and the rich man and Lazarus died the rich man died and when they died and there was a thin line between hell and Sheol and the men the rich the rich man say please give me water and Abraham said there are prophets on the land if they don't hear the prophets they won't hear me I will not give you no water that was paradise Jesus went there and he walk and he say Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, this is me you've been waiting for. I have come now to preach you the gospel. If you receive me, then I'm going to take you where you're supposed to go. The Bible said David, all of them was there and they heard his message and they received him. But he didn't go yet. He went to a different place. He walked into hell. He knocked at the door of hell and he said, oh, Open the door and they say who is this he said the lord of glory they say who is this the king of kings ah! and while he was talking remember the veil was split they refused to open the door and two angels came kicked the door and they opened the doors of hell when he walked into hell he found out where satan was he said give me the key of life and death and he took the key of life and death after he took it the bible said in the book of luke all the dead rose and they begin to walk the street of jerusalem everyone they knew that died was walking the street of jerusalem but now it's still not over yet and that is when now he went back and he get his body you see a glorious body and that is when now the two angels the two angels roll the stone you miss you still miss the revelation with 
without the word of God, sans parole de Dieu, you cannot access the glory of God. Avec gloire de Dieu. The two cherubim, the two angels that was there, they were two cherubim. Finally, Finalement, they themselves, just like you and me, they've been waiting on the manifestation of the word of God. And finally, now the word of God manifested. What they did now, they rolled a stone. And then they stood behind him. He said, now, if you want God, access the word of God. There is a scripture that says, in the book of Isaiah, those that wait on the Lord, those that wait on who? Who is the Lord? Jesus, guys, Jesus. Jesus. We are talking about nobody else, Jesus. Jesus. Those that wait on the Lord, the Lord is Jesus. And he says that, what happened? He will what? Renew your strength. But after he renew your strength, what happened? They shall mount up on what? Wings. How do I wait on God? Joshua chapter 1. This book of the law shall not depart it from my mouth. I shall meditate on it day and night. So how do I wait on God? David said, when I lay down, I meditate on your word. How do I wait on the Lord? I open up the scriptures and I begin to digest the scriptures. As I begin to digest it, I'm waiting on him and out of nowhere I begin to go wings like eagle now let me ask you a question who has a face of an eagle a cherubim has a face of an eagle that's been now a cherubim will pick me up and take me ah. oh you're not a cherubim will pick you up and take you to the glory. You see, you see, you're still missing it. So that's when the two angels that was there, they say, as long this man, you follow this man, I'll take you there. And that is why, when Jesus was rising up, they were staring. And the two cherubim said, men of Galilee, this Jesus you see go up the same way he go up the same way he will come down what does that mean the same way he will come down it happened Acts chapter 1 in the day of Pentecost a violent wind blew in the upper room and then tongues of fire appeared that's what they were saying they said the same way he goes up the Holy Ghost is coming you're still missing it you cannot access the presence of God without going through the cherubim so they say the Holy Spirit is coming now. Who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is God. What does the Holy Spirit say? In your belly. So what they are saying is, we are not protecting the presence no more. You can have them. Because of the word of God, you can have the presence. Now you can walk into the holies of holies. You can say, I feel the glory of God. You can say, I feel the presence of God. Oh, I come to tell somebody today, uh, we have a better priest now. And that priest is Jesus Christ. We have a better priest. That priest is the king of kings. He has torn the veil. And he gives us access. Do you realize? 
every book of the Gospels talk about the cherubim, the face of the lion, the face of the ox, the face of the eagle, the face of the man. In another word, he gave us the revelation how to get to the throne. Paul says, let us enter the throne boldly because the Son of God has died for our sins. He died for our iniquities. I come to tell somebody, you need to stop complaining because Jesus gives you access to that glory. You have access to that presence. You have access to that power. All you got to do, you got to dwell on the word. You got to stay on the word. You got to meditate on the word. I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to get you to understand. If you want to encounter God, put the foot down, pick up the Bible. If you want to encounter God, put Facebook down, pick up the Bible. If you want to encounter God, put your friends down, pick up the Bible. When you read the word, you will enter his presence. You will enter his glory. Only the word can give you access and that power manifest in different form, in different ways. It can be like eagle. It can be like lion. I know we got lions here. We are lions here. It can be like ox. It can be majestic. It can be a revelation. That is why the Bible said there are diversities of gift, but the same Holy Ghost. There are different manifestations, but the same Holy Ghost. In another word, the cherubims, they manifest different ways, but because I got the Holy Ghost, it is with jealousy. He give me the Holy Ghost because I got him, I got his glory. Because I got the Holy Ghost, I got his power. I'm trying to help somebody here. Stop looking at your problem. If you got the Holy Ghost, you got the kingdom of heaven. You got that glory on the inside. If it is you, lift your head and say, Lie. He has risen. He has risen. Put it out. Il le fait. And the fact that he rose from the dead. Et le fait que de la mort, he turned the veil. Il voilà. Where Adam couldn't go. Côté Adam a calé, I can go. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible said the first Adam. Bible dit premier Adam kill men. Tuer because of sin. Péché. But the second Adam. Mais bring us out of death and give us life. Why are you still sad? Why do you still cry? Why do you still complain? He already give you life. 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 Why do you complain? Why do you sad? He already give you life. You already have life. Abraham. Yes, I can understand. He can complain. David. Yes. He can complain. But me, I can't complain. Because he gave me access. They never have. He gave me place. They never have. Tonight. If you want that access, there's only one thing you gotta do. The Bible said, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Do you know who the glory of God is? Jesus. <laughs> no, you, you get it in her. You, you start getting it, right? So, so what is the glory of God? Jesus is the glory of God. Once you got Jesus, that glory will be exposed to you. If you are here tonight, you tired of the way your life has been going. You tired of what's been going on. You tired 
of your dry season. You tired of the attacks of the enemy. You tired of witchcraft powers. You tired of voodoo power. You tired of curses against you. I'm here to tell you. Receive the word of God. Receive the word of God. Receive the word of God. I said, receive the word of God. 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 Watch, watch. Receive the word of God. 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 Receive it now. 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 Receive it. 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 Receive. 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 There's a smoke here. There's a smoke. That's the cherry bit. 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 Ruach. Elohim. That's the cherry bit. That's the cherry bit. Ruach. Elohim. Ruach. Elohim. Ruach. Elohim, Ruach Elohim, Ruach Elohim, fill this place. Ah, ah. Fill this something like this. Prophet, what are you saying? Guys, for the past few weeks, God been dealing with me. And guess how he's been dealing with me? He's been dealing with me in the name of Jesus. Everything else is nonsense. Everything else is noise. Everything else is noise. There's a way that I used to read the Bible. I don't read it the same no more. If I don't see Jesus, I don't want it. What I'm saying is, 
Ça m'a dit c'est que you may have been a Christian for so long but yet you have not been walking with Jesus or you may have not walked with Jesus at all you will not find an atmosphere like this I was standing here and I sense in my spirit disobedience rebellion stubbornness and the Lord said to me tell them I already forgive them of their sins and he said to me all you have to do accept his word so I'm only going to give you five minutes I don't want to know I'm not I'm not a pope I'm a, I'm, I'm not a Catholic priest I say I have seen father no but what I'm telling you if you feel this atmosphere is for you go on your knees now you have five minutes to talk to him I don't want to know your issues talk to him yourself you got five minutes